Your Jimmy Gang, Jimmy Gang, Jimmy Gang, the Army, the Navy, the Unstoppable. Welcome back to another video with your God, man. Listen, a lot of y'all is like me, bro. Y'all got questions about the G Herbo situation. Like, what? He was he was scamming. What? Who told you that? Nah, not my nigga Herbo. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all probably feel like me. That's how I felt about it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't believe Herb scamming, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the GOAT Lil Wayne, though. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the GOAT Lil Wayne, though. But yeah, man, I ain't, I ain't believe my nigga Herb was scamming, bro. But apparently, bro, he about to go sit up and do some time for allegedly scamming. Now, I don't know if he did this on himself or what. Like, I don't know if he just got caught up in a situation, but I want to find out. I want to learn. And I know y'all do, too. So smash that subscribe button, man. Like the video. Drop a comment in advance because you know I'm coming with some fire, man. Let's go. Shout out to the family. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get right into this video right now. Nobody wins when the family feels. City of sorrow, man. Ugly introduction. Red snow. Heartaches, heartbreaks, headaches. <laughs> That's one of my, that, I ain't gonna lie, that's one of my favorite uh, Herbo songs. The remix to We Ball, bro, G Herbo smoked that, bro, walked on it. Any real nigga gotta enjoy that song. <laughs> Look, these these this is younger days. You see the this is definitely younger days right here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, phone them, stop tweaking. <laughs> Kung oh, rapper G-Herbo is facing two to three years in prison after agreeing to plead guilty in Massachusetts to federal wire fraud charges. Prosecutors accused him of using stolen identities to fund private jet... Like, what was Herb even doing in Mass? Like, what was Herb even doing out in Massachusetts? Like, you a rack nigga. We should have knew something weird is going on you out in Massachusetts, nigga. Oops. A vacation at a Jamaican villa, a personal chef, and the purchase of two designer puppies, and then lying about it all to federal agents. The South Side. Bro, he paid for a, J a trip to Jamaica, bro. A trip to Jamaica, bro. Come on, my nigga. Really, bro? Native, whose real name is Herbert Wright the third, is also facing misdemeanor charges in Chicago. Two weeks ago, CPD officers found four guns and roughly fifteen hundred dollars worth of marijuana in a car that he was riding in. The name Herbert is crazy. We're not going to let him pass over that. Herbert is a crazy name to be a young nigga. Baby be really from the hood. Herb ain't really from the hood. He had he like a creative player. Everybody that know me, y'all know I'm bring my problems to. I feel like Cairo was hating at that point. When he said that about Herbo, he was hating on him. You know what I'm saying? Because it was all good when you was around the nigga. And that person was not to pertain to my business at all, but it should affect my personal day-to-day -day life. So everybody that know me, y'all know I'm independent. I'm signed to machine. I've been signed to machine since I was 16 years old, so I was a minor. My parents had to sign me up. Very poker face, too, but... This got to be a stressful time. Actually, I think you could see the stress on him a little bit. And by the way, G Herbo, you're good. So that 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 didn't even land, right? Like you're you're Gucci, right? I'm great. I love that. I love that. G Herbo, whose real name is. He, I remember when this all first happened. He definitely was saying, "Yo, niggas think I'm Hush Puppy." Ah, uh, like bro, they really trying to say you going out like Hush Puppy though, gang. That's what they trying to say though. Wright the third grew up in Chicago from a young age. He drawn in music and found solace in writing lyrics and expressing himself through raps. Long live juice, man. Rest in peace to juice word, bro. That honestly, that's a great song between G Herbo and Juice World. You see, growing up in a rough environment, G Herbo used his music as an outlet to share his realities of street life and shed light on the challenges faced by his community. As he honed his skills, G Herbo gained recognition for the raw and authentic storyteller. His freestyles painted vivid pictures. One freestyle he did on the radio about five years ago was turned into one of his biggest songs to this day. Born in the shot like Yeah, but to do crime like Bum J, I ain't scared of none. Passport snap, young nigga ran up that stack, might as well go to Paris. That clip had millions of views on his Instagram. He decided to make it a video and a song titled Run It, which have over 25 million views and counting. 
This shot like you ain't wanna do the car like one day, I ain't scared of none. Passport stamp, young nigga ran up that sack, might as well go to Ferris, huh? What? As we stop the video. Bro, G Herbo always been talented, bro. I know niggas always had them off. Oh, he rhyme off lyric. He rhyme off the beat. I, I, he'll never catch the beat. They had them jokes early on. But look now, a lot of niggas is doing that shit. And that, that's their whole claim to fame is how they rap like that. So, G Herbo been doing that, nigga. You got to respect it. Continue. I want you guys them to look. five minutes of hell series, fire. The left of the screen. The person behind G Herbo is a guy named No Limit Cairo. Fast forward to a couple years later, Cairo took the time to go on a- AKA a hater. No Limit Cairo, a.k.a. a hater. Like, I ain't saying he a hater to everybody, but he was definitely hating on G Herbo. From everything I've seen, hating on the man. Platform and decided to talk down on G Herbo. He went on 16, shot him, and voiced his opinion. And I got a feeling the story we are later discuss was a huge part of that. Listen to the music, you know, it looked like he take care of his hood. Like that. So you saying, like, the shit down in his raps, he not doing? Because I even heard him say, like, you know, his... His homies around on they millionaires. I'll type this music. The niggas who work, the niggas who work and got a hustle got, is millionaires. Yeah, the niggas who grinding and getting some money. But you think the niggas who just sitting around is just millionaires for no reason? No. He said what? I don't know the exact song. <laughs> I don't want to misquote the lyric, but I, I'm pretty sure somewhere. Oh, uh, you talking yeah. about that one shit? You said all his homies millionaires, like his homies got and shit. Yeah. Yeah, you talking about other rappers? He ain't talking about, like, niggas, like... Now, nah, that's and, funny. Niggas say he talk about other rappers. Well, maybe he talk about the rappers that's... The, the rappers around him, that's his homies that came up with him. The niggas who rapping. But y'all niggas who not rapping, y'all got to get a job somehow. You got to do something to get the bag. Like, be a promoter, be a... I don't know, something. Right here. He talking about other niggas who got on Bibby and niggas like that. He ain't talking about... He ain't talking about niggas like that. So Basically, he said, he ain't talking about me. I ain't no millionaire. Is that like? And because I ain't no millionaire, I'm here to hate on his ass. Before this made it, like, was that conversation my brother had? Like, if you know, you know, if he make it, taking the hood with him, type. Yeah, every nigga, every nigga in the hood said that when they when they was rapping. Like, why well, wouldn't the nigga say the nigga, bro, right here, Mercy rapping, Faro rapping, a lot of little weird rapping. That's nigga, we going through some shit together. You know, we out here witnessing the guys dying. Certain days we out here zero dollars hanging with each other. Like, folks, we gotta, we gotta do better, folks. We gotta, this shit gotta change, folks. You know? So once a month start doing some shit like folks them doing, rapping it, that's air nigga dream to like look out for the niggas who was fucked up when they won, you know? Now, I'm going to keep it brief and stop. Now, I ain't going to sit here and act like you're not supposed to look out for the guys because you is supposed to look out for the guys, like, especially if they're really your guys. Like, not just any nigga, but the niggas who really your guys, yeah, you're supposed to make sure they good, especially if you can put them in position. If you can put them in position to get money on their own, that's what you're really supposed to do because then, you know what I'm saying, you could give a nigga a couple dollars, but if you give a nigga an opportunity to make some bread for real and keep making that bread, that's really, that's going to make you and them happy. He ain't got to keep coming to you feeling no way that he got to ask you for bread. You ain't got to feel no way that he asks you for bread all the time. You see he hustling, he making his own money. And if he still needs something from you, of course, that's your man's in him. You feel me? But just giving away money that you don't have is ridiculous. That's how niggas never get rich, bro. Yeah, shout out to 16. Shout him once again. If you guys want to check the attack. As you can see, G Herbo ain't even having like that, nigga. That's why he out here scamming to maintain a lifestyle, nigga. This hour plus interview with No Limit Cairo. He also broke it down in segments. I advise you guys to go over there and do so. But I wanted you guys to hear that clip because some people say that was all part of the plan on him disassociating himself and other people a part of the crew from G Herbo and his legal troubles. And some people say that was the truth on how we really felt about G Herbo. But after the story. Damn, I never even thought about that because that did happen a little bit before the charges came down on G Herbo. He definitely did, like, nah, we ain't, we ain't no limit here with the real no limbs, ah, all that. Remember that? I want you guys' opinion after displaying everything that's presented to the public. So before we run down this one, remember, I don't give you no angle. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to jump right to it. Now, G Herbo was signed to an independent Chicago label named Machine Entertainment Group, co-founded by Mikey Halstead, who would later play key to this video, and a guy named JB. Under that label, G Herbo mixtapes garnered attention, not only within Chicago, Nah, G Herbo, I didn't know he was signed to this 
same one independent this whole time. I know he was independent, but I, 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 I don't know. I just didn't know it was like another entity involved. Why did I think it was just D Herbo by himself? But across the wider hip hop scene, as his popularity grew, major record labels took notice, and G Herbo eventually signed a record deal, propelling him into the mainstream music industry. Now, just this past week, G Herbo spoke up on social media about his contract situation and his dealings with his label, Machine Entertainment, and specifically talked about the label owner, Mikey. Everybody that know me, y'all you know I don't bring my problems to the internet personal or nothing pertaining to my business at all, but. Affecting my personal day to day life. So, everybody that know me, y'all know I'm. Now, the way he scratched his head, though, the way he just did that scratch right there, that nigga is stressing. Putting on Santa Machine. I've been Santa Machine since I was 16 years old, so I was a minor. And we never see Herbo not laughing, not smiling, not making a joke. We never see Herbo like this, so you know something wrong. Parents had to sign me over, you know what I'm saying? We've been family, been independent, made history. Boom. So, 16, first and foremost, I signed my publishing away for perpetual for 15 grand. You signed your publishing away for 15 grand? Oh my God, you just must not have known. Nobody must not have told you. Nobody must not have put you on. Hell no. But, Nate, you claim he ain't no business i was young anyway so bottom line i got to the bottom of it of course we got that back been a minute that contract so many times on oh, for sure all right years. so he said he got that back all right cool good 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 he got his publishing back been independent work with other labels sony red epic now we have a public system i never had a direct deal with the label it's always been with with him with the machine so over the years, when we started generating money, probably this was we was on the Sony system, like 19. Put me to the side, like, bro, let me run your business for you. I wasn't really business savvy. This is somebody I trust with my life, like my brother, like a father figure. But that's a conflict of interest. Because if he a label, if he's the label owner that you signed to, he should not be the nigga that's running your business. Because who checking him? Who checking to make sure you should have lawyers too, like a business lawyer? But yeah, the business lawyer. You should have a business manager and a business lawyer. Let me run your business for you, bro. All right. So, from then on, he's running my business, paying the bills, paying my bills, making sure everything paid, true staff, everything, everything all went through him. I really was only playing with my ancillary bread, you feel me? Just having motion on me. Ancillary, up. not the residual. I always control the residual. Long story short, 12 years later, I've been hearing rumors that I owe his money, right? I owe him money. So, you owe him. And I'm not I'm just. How you owe him if he the nigga who running your bit your business? So he paying himself. How the hell you owe him? Make that make sense. Sweeping it on the road. You know what I'm saying? Long story short, I go get up with him. I'm like, hey, bro, what's up with these numbers? Look at the numbers. One right. What's up with that? What's up with that shit? Why you keep doing that shit? And started like just thinking, 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 thinking. So, recently. We had a meeting. Me, him, uh, Mick, my old manager. Mick Bro was in the room. Uh, Coffee was in the room. Mick Bro was in the room. His brother was in the room, OB. And my brother Mansky was in the room. So we just having a conversation amongst us because I wanted witnesses there. So I talked to him, looking at the app, bro. This ain't right. You ain't right. You are bro, you see that? Bro, this is, you could tell niggas stressing when he start making up different sounds and shit he ain't never made. Nigga ain't never even used that shit as an ad-lib. He ain't never even used that shit as an ad-lib on a track. Nigga, he made that shit up on this video. Throw my business, right, right. You guys throw the money, right, right, to him. So it's like, long story short, I'm like, man, bro, it ain't working. You always told me if it didn't work, you was going to let me out of the contract. So she always going to take that. Work. I come to him, you know, let me out of the contract, sign me out. Sign me <coughs> They always going to tell you that. Three copies. But... Thing is, I was about to really let him manipulate me because he's good at this to leave out without nothing and just let go back and forth between my lawyer and his lawyer, which we are still doing anyways. I'm like, nah, I already hear something draft. I'm like, you have to sign this in good faith. So after we leave the meeting, after we finish lead the meeting, everybody outside, Nick, uh, Coffee, and Macy still outside. I'm just thinking I'm outside with him, I'm talking. I'm like, nah, bro, he got to sign what I have. 
right hand on my head saying it's like because I know him. Go back in the room with his brother. Okay. So now he about to make son go ahead and sign another paper. Not make, but he about to tell. I mean, he what did he just say? He say not make, but. I was about to really let him manipulate me because he's good at this to leave out without nothing and just let go back and forth between my lawyer and his lawyer, which we are still doing anyways. I'm like, nah, I already hear something draft. I'm like, you have to sign this in good faith. So after we leave the meeting, after we finish leave the meeting, everybody outside, Nick, uh, Coffee, and Macy still outside. I'm just thinking I'm outside with him. I'm talking. I'm like, nah, bro, he got to sign what I have right hand on my head saying this like because I know him. Go back in the room with his brother having a personal conversation. I said, brother, for me, you got to sign this out of good faith. For me, and we'll figure it out through the lawyers, of course. You know, of course he did. He signed three copies. Boom. Shake hands after everything. Lean. All right, so he got it. Basically, G Herbo has some shit drafted up, and he got this nigga to sign it. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just keep going. So now... After we finna do the audits and everything, because he know he did bad. So long as we were going to f almost four minutes about to sum it up. So I'm getting these calls from like my criminal attorney in Boston. My criminal lawyer been calling me, which he paid. I paid and uh, for almost a, a million on this case. And he paid because he paid my. I paid almost a mil for the lawyer fee. I know you wish that could be scam money right there. You would definitely not want to come out of your pocket and pay your actual money. God damn it, nigga. That's a lot of money, bro. So my lawyer called me because they know each other. I'm like, man, could you call him? He was using, like, a tactic with Esther. He's saying I made him sign his contract under the arrest. And he's trying to, like, get me arrested for it. Oh, no, 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 no. You had people with you. It was people there. It was obviously witnesses to the situation. So you got all the proof you need. See, I was questioning to go see, like, I wanted to see how he told him he got to sign it. Because how he has told them niggas. See, when he said, I'm like, nah, he got to sign this for me. I, he was talking to the niggas. He wasn't talking to the nigga. When he walked in, he said, yo, bro, it's a good brother for me. Sign this just for me. I, I. So he didn't say, remember, what, what I was thinking, he, I, I had to make sure, too. I made sure I went back to go listen correctly. He didn't say that to the nigga. He said that to his homies. Like, yo, bro, I need this nigga to sign this for me. I, you know what I mean? So without the aggression, I'm, I'm just going by his story, though. He got me blocked. My lawyer, like, can you call him? I try to call him. I'm like, can you call him? Like, you know what I'm saying? He got me blocked. See, so now son acting like he's scared of G Herbo. Now son playing the scare game. Like, nah, I can't talk to you on the phone. Ah, you threatening me. Maybe me sign something under duress. Like, bro, what y'all think, bro? Do y'all believe G Herbo that? Do y'all believe G Herbo that he ain't pressed son? He just asked son to sign it in good, good faith for him, and son just signed it in good faith. Or do y'all think he pressed him? Let me know in the comments, bro. I, I, I'm with G Herbo, bro. I don't believe it. But he's using these tactics, these manipulative tactics. To nah, me. nah, nah. I rock with G Herbo, man. That that we ball remix, nigga. That five minutes of hell. Nah, come on, man. I'm rocking with G Herbo. Take advantage. So I'm just coming here to say, like, you can't win, you know. Man. All artists, young artists, you gotta stay your ground, man. With what's right? You feel what I'm saying? And I'm blessed to be able to do this. You know what I mean? Had the resources to be able to still provide for myself, my family. Go to now. That's a fact. Cause a lot of people will be just stuck. Now they can't provide for their family. In this way, the right way, the legal way, the righteous way, and win. And I just want to look in your eyes and tell you, you can't beat me. Now, some people say G Herbo is putting the blame on everybody but himself. Also, some people say it's because he's about to turn himself in and do a two to three year sentence. According to the 31 page indictment and plea agreement that we're going to go to thoroughly later in the video. And I let you guys be the judge of how you feel at the conclusion. With G Herbo new fame success, it came with a new lifestyle, fame, wealth and opportunities he never had imagined. G. Herbo embraced the trappings of a newfound prosperity, flashing expensive jewelry, driving luxury cars, and living in lavish homes. However, amid the glitz and glamour, at his early stages, he faced challenges managing his finances leading up to the day and adjusting to his new status. In an attempt to maintain his extravagant lifestyle and keep up his appearances, G. Herbo made some questionable decisions. He started involving himself in various business ventures, some which were not entirely legitimate. He was enticed by the allure of easy money, and he found them. You know what it is, bro? Niggas be rappers, bro, and all these other rappers is just looking. The way, the way they living is crazy. 
So he got to, like, match up to that. He got to try to, like, you know what I'm saying, live that life, too. He want to look like, like, you know what I'm saying, money in the videos, too. But you can't be going to do about it the wrong way, though, gang. Navigating the murky world of financial schemes and fraud. Over time, G. Herbo's involvement in these fraudulent activities caught the attention of law enforcement agencies. They began investigating his financials dealing, suspecting him of being part of a larger fraud scheme. As evident mounted, the authorities decided to press charges against him, alleging his participation in fraudulent activities that had harmed numerous individuals and organizations. Facing legal consequences, G. Herbo found himself at the crossroads. He realized the impact his actions had on others and the potential ramifications for his career and personal life. In the face of adversity, G. Herbo resolves to confront the charges head on, seeking legal representation to navigate the complex legal proceedings ahead. Ultimately, G. Herbo had accepted a plea. Now, he's about to turn himself in in some months, facing two to three years, with three years of home confinement when he get home. Chicago area Damn. rapper has been charged with making a false... Damn, bro, two to three years with two years of confinement mandatory. I mean, I said confinement. Two years of house arrest mandatory. Sheesh, that hurts a rapper, my nigga. I mean, you, he already got to go down for two to three years. Then when he come home, he can't leave home. ...to a federal agent in an extensive fraud case. Herbert Wright, who goes by the name G. Herbo, appeared in a federal court in Springfield... That nigga had do got a head like a loaf of bread. No cap. That nigga, look at that nigga dead, got a loaf of bread head. Massachusetts Tuesday. He's one of six people previously accused of using stolen credit cards for four years to pay for a lavish lifestyle. Federal agent... For four years? For four years? Nah. They right denied knowing one of the other defendants when they questioned him in 2018. If convicted in that case, he could serve up to five years in prison. Now, according to G. Herbo plea that he filed on 7-10-2023, he wasn't a mastermind, but he was a person who would often use the mastermind. And in his indictment alone, it was one other person that go by the name Antonio Strong, who's referenced in the indictment as BH. Now, before this, Antonio Strong, who's referenced to as BH in the indictment, as we mentioned, he went by GBE Antonio. GBE Antonio was known to be around Chief Keith and his glow gang entourage. <laughs> Nigga said, if you had a fade on my body, you'd be ugly as hell. He ain't lying, though. He ain't lying, though. Nigga still ugly as hell. I forgot you can see this one. Let me do it again. Tornado. Now, the fans believe GBE Antonio is responsible for over $1.5 million in credit card fraud. Having G Herbo admit... So just about under 150,000 of those illegal funds. And the time frame that this happened starts back to 2015 and allegedly lasted to about 2018. And just to put that in 2015 to 2018, how was G Herbo balling between those years? He was balling. I ain't even gonna lie. He was balling. I ain't even gonna lie. But shit, I thought he was just making all his money off a of rap, bro. I be, I guess I be wrong with how I be thinking this rap money be coming in. Because I be thinking these niggas be really eating. Like, I be thinking these niggas be making millions. Then when you look up, like, celebrity net worth type shit, when you actually see how much niggas be worth, it be like a couple hundred thousand. You be like, what? How? That was well. But G Herbo been doing this for a long time, long time. So I believe he definitely worth a couple M's. Before, G Herbo was known for more than his freestyles. Now, G Herbo signed that plea July 13, 2023. News has surfaced. He reposted this. I know phone won't tell on me like it's told on Thug. It's funny because when I look, the only person that's in his indictment, GBE Antonio, he agreed to the statements that the feds had presented for a reduced sentence. Clear as day on the second page. It states the U.S. Department... Wait, hold up. Is he saying that G Herbo tell it? Hold up, the fuck? 2015, and allegedly lasted to about 2018. And just to put that in perspective, 
E. Antonio, he agree to the statements that fell on me, like told on Thug. It's funny because listen, I look. The only person that's in his indictment, GBE Antonio, he agree to the statements that the feds have presented for. Who agree, G Herbo or GBE Antonio? Do sentence clear as day on the second page. It states the U.S. Department of Justice agrees to dismiss the remaining counts of the indictment in the United States versus Antonio M. Strong. The charge defendant with aggravated identity theft count 8 and 12 following defendant's sentencing. Defendant agrees that the attached statement of facts is true and accurate. And still, with count 1, Antonio will be incarcerated for up to 20 years, supervised release for three years, and a fine of $250,000. G. Herbo count one, a part of his plea, incarceration for up to five years, supervised release for three years, a fine of $250,000, and a mandatory special assessment of $100. Now, when it came to their sentencing... All right, so the nigga told on G. Herbo. G. Herbo ain't telling that nigga. The nigga told on her. Derrick G. Herbo ain't had to make no statement. That wasn't a part of his plea. Antonio ended up having to serve a 20-year minimum. And G how you tell you? But wait, why he ended up having... Oh, because he was the nigga who masterminded this shit. But how the fuck he... I guess the reason maybe, maybe they reduced his joint because he told on Herbo. And then he still got 20? That's nuts. Herbo up to five years. See, Antonio had a level of seven based off his offense and conviction. Because his conviction involved over $95,000 to $150,000, it increased by eight points. The defendant's counts of conviction, United States against G. Herbo, well, his was because false statements. His level was decreased by two points because he ended up accepting responsibility for the defendant's crime and his offenses level prior to the operation and that seemed like a no-brainer based on the evidence they had against them like they say family when the feds come they already got their information That's they just fact. waiting for you to go to court or accept this plea That's so now fact. let's go over the evidence of this indictment and what g herbo had admitted to every company that he screwed over the feds had evidence on page four of his agreement, he agreed to pay restitution of $139,878. G. Herbo scammed over eight companies. He owed Plain Masters LTD $24,000. That's a jet company? Nigga was taking, nigga was definitely taking private jets off the credit card. $130. He owed Aircraft Service Group $20,670. Nigga pieces was jinking. Nigga pieces was jinking like a motherfucker. $9. He owed 15500 to Epic Jet LLC. $19,760 to Jet Partners Worldwide. $14,540. Bro, if this nigga was taking all these jets, nigga, it couldn't have been for fun, nigga. They, I you know, I'm a, I'm a, shh, shh. We ain't even gonna talk about what was in Juice World's luggage. Dollars to World Travel Holdings, thirty-four thousand and twenty-five dollars to Dream Squad LLC. He owe up ten thousand four hundred and fifty-eight dollars to Wolf Wolf Puppies, and last but not least, he owe seven hundred and fifty-two dollars to Airport Car and Limousine Service. All eight equal to one hundred and thirty-nine thousand. So now we got niggas had to throw the little seven hundred dollar charge on there too. Like yeah, they was doing little shit too. Niggas was swiping these cars for rentals. Yes, they was. Let out the way, let's get to the evidence. Between at least March 9th, 2017, through and including November 24th, 2018, the defendant, G. Herbo, conspired with Antonio M. Strong, GBE Antonio, and others to defraud businesses and individuals by possession and using a transferring unauthorized and stolen payment card account information, the illicit account information, to obtain valuables and goods. During this time, Strong, GBE Antonio, was a music promoter and right, G. Herbo was a rap artist known as Lil Herb, Herb, or G. Herbo, and each based on the area around Chicago, Illinois. The illicit account information included actual car holders' name, addresses, payment card, account numbers, security codes, and account expiration dates. Strong and his co-conspirators referred to the illicit account information as moves to perpetrate the fraud with G. Herbo. Niggas really thought that was low. Like, nigga, that is so not low, nigga, so hot. Others, GBE Antonio, will use various telephone numbers, email accounts, 
with fictitious names and companies and alias such as BH, Walter O'Malley, and Darren Greger. BH is a real person and resides in the Chicago area who never authorized or even knew about the transactions in his name that are set forth today. Now, as we break up the evidence, it's clear to say that the speculation that the trip that he... That nigga must have been rich as hell. Whoever BH is, he was rich as hell. He ain't even noticed the money being gone. Niggas is taking private jets under his account and he don't even notice it. That's how you know you're getting too much money. And too much money ain't enough money. With future in Jamaica has nothing to do with his indictment. The Jamaica trip they referencing to date back to 2017. The indictment listed that G. Herbert would use Hubert Light when given his credentials instead of Hubert Wright. Full private jets, exotic. <laughs> Bruh, that's wild funny. Instead of using Herbert Wright, he used Herbert Light. Okay. Reynolds, a luxury stay in the villa in Jamaica all. and two puppies. This nigga is not slick. And one thing we learned about G Herbo, nigga, he is not slick. G11 state that on November 24th, 2018, when a special agent of the United States Secret Service interviewed G Herbo concerning the frauds and his relationship with GBE Antonio, G Herbo falsely stated he never provided GBE Antonio any money, he never received anything of value from GBE Antonio, and he had never had no direct relationship with GBE Antonio. However, these false statements did not materially obstruct the investigation or prosecution, according to the FBI. According to the FBI, the request started back in 2016 when G. Herbo was asked for various service. He said he would frequently communicate with GBE Antonio through text messages, voice calls, and Instagram direct messages, DMs. Between their two accounts, no limit. See, all y'all niggas who be thinking y'all good move, making moves in the DM, like, oh, ah, ah, yeah, send that over here. Ah. Nigga, you're hot. The police is getting that Instagram DM, bro. Yes, they getting the DMs, everything, nigga. Whether or not homie on the other end give it up. Instagram themselves is giving it up. Herbo and GBE underscore Antonio. As early as 2016, Wright requested that Strong provided him with things of value, such as accommodations and a flight. On May 21st, 2016, GBE Antonio sent G Herbo DMs that stated, my iMessage or FaceTime don't work. Regular call or text and provided his cell phone number. Soon after, on oh, Nigga, that regular call is what got you effed up. FaceTime only, nigga. FaceTime only. 30th, 2016, G Herbo. I wonder how long it's gonna take them peoples to catch up to FaceTime calls. And GBE Antonio engaged in the following DMs. Herbo Wright, G Herbo. Hey, what up? I need a room. Antonio Strong, GBE Antonio. Where you at? Right? I'm in the rap. A slang for Chicago. See if you can get me something for the night. Like to check in when I leave my show tonight. G Herbo also quoting. Finesse me a room or something, dude. Get us a crib while we out here. Or something, bro. And she yeah, you extra hot. And you want a text like this? And you want a text like this? G Herbo, my nigga, you supposed to know better, gang. Come on, my nigga. You definitely knew that this shit is something. I go. GB Antonio response. Okay. On September. Like, you should have never even be doing this type of shit because you not even that tight, bro, because you hot as hell. Like, nigga, you hot as hell, nigga. Whoever on the other end of that phone should have been like, nigga, don't even talk to me like that. <laughs> like, nigga, don't even talk to me like that. That's wild hot. That's crazy. 2016, G Herbo and GBE Antonio engaged in the following DMs exchange. Hey, boy, I need a flight right now due for the night. You owe me. That's from G Herbo. GBE Antonio response, okay, name, B date, email, and where from. It went from commercial airplanes to private jets just seven months later. This when the jet fraud started to take place. On February 28th, once a nigga take a private jet, he don't want to fly no other way. Once a nigga hop on a PJ, nigga, he don't want to fly no other way, nigga. He got spoiled. 2017, G Herbo and Antonio engaged in the following DMs. GBE Antonio, what's the new number? G Herbo proceeded to give him his new number and said, hit me. In the span of a week, on March 9th to March 17th, 2017, Antonio used the number entered in 1625 to elicit credit card account information to obtain private jets, charters for G Herbo who, as we mentioned, would be listed as Hubert Light, but his real name is Hubert Wright. During that time, they scammed the following companies. 
Plane Master Ltd. Aircraft Services Group Incorporation ASG. Pipejet LLC, which is Epic Jet, and Jet Partners Worldwide Incorporation. Jet Partners. For the Plane Masters fraud, GBE Antonio and G Herbo use DMs to communicate their messages. GBE Antonio DM G Herbo. Call me, bro. What be to you? Like what I'm still waiting on flight info, bro. After you stand on top of everything else, you must be sleep off drink or something, man. LOL. Wake your Damn, that nigga Herbo is tight. Nigga Herb demanding this flight. Nigga, you hear how you talking to him? Call me, bro. What be to you? Like, I'm still waiting on the flight info. After you stand on top of everything else, you must be sleep off the drink. Yeah, he definitely coming at the nigga, though. Peep the tone. Big head, what's up, Frankenstein? G Herbo to UCC. Hey, tell Antonio to hit my line, bro. He tweaking. UCC respond to G Herbo. I just told him. You talk to him, gang? G Herbo respond to UCC. Yeah, holla at it slower. We finna link with y'all, though. On that same day, March 9th, 2017, GBE Antonio used the fake name Richard O'Malley. The phone number ended in 1625, and the email is O'MalleyAuto at gmail.com. To book a flight with plane masters from Chicago to Miami for nine passengers. G Herbo, G Herbo's bodyguard, G Herbo's associates, all posted on their social media accounts with various photos of themselves and or other passengers. Of course! Niggas gotta flex on the jet, bro. What's the point of being on the jet if we're not gonna flex? Let's keep it a band. Including inside and outside the private jet. That charge turned out to be $24,730 for the flight. But the transaction was later <coughs> charged back to plane masters as fraudulent. Now, the ASG fraud happened five days later. March. That's where you fucked up, see? There you go. The charge came back. Now they know, wait, something wrong. Fraud. Fraud. Are them other flights that he booked through us fraudulent too? Let's look into that. There you go. There the investigation go. 14, 2017. <coughs> Antonio, given the name BH, with Global Society at gmail.com once again, booked the flight with ASG from Tampa to Chicago. BH stated that he was from Sony Music and needed a flight for some of his performers. And he also provided a telephone number in it in 1053. And during this time, G Herbo had ended up shooting a music video called Yerkes while inside and outside the jet, according to the feds. Try and quit that drink, I'm working on it. Niggas literally used his music video as evidence. That trip was fraudulently authorized by Antonio for $20,679. But the entire amount was charged back as fraudulent after the actual account holder disputed the charges. Right. The next day, on March 15, 2017, GBE Antonio used the name BH and said he was with Epic Music. He ended up giving them the Global Society 2017 at gmail.com to book the flight from Chicago to Austin, Texas. But this time, they allegedly scammed Epic Jet, and that flight was full over $14,000, and after the credit card fee, $15,015. And, $15. and the next day after that, they would defraud another jet company. That's three jets in three days. Bro, what? Yeah, y'all with niggas on a rampage out here, bro. You wanted to get caught, gang. Fraud. Now, this company was the Jet Partners. This happened on March 17, 2017. Antonio allegedly electronic signed was $19,760. One day later, on March 18, 2017, Strong sent Wright the following DMs. Call me ASAP. Soon after, the feds believed G Herbo will request for more goods and services, such as flights, vehicles, and accommodations by fraud. Oh, nah. Oh, nah, oh, nah, oh, nah. Oh, nah. My boy, they got everything they need, bro. I see why you just decided to take them years, bro. I see why G Herbo said, I'm going to just take that time. I, I get it now. Oh, I get it now. 23rd, 2017, G Herbo engaged in the following DMs with Antonio. G Herbo, I need that Bentley truck ASAP. Antonio respond, where you at? The next month, on May 19, 2017, G Herbo had wrote GBE Antonio, give me a whip, I'm in the A. Antonio respond, okay, give me a second, where you stand? G Herbo quoted, Buckhead. Four days later, G Herbo wrote Antonio, where my Bent truck, LOL. GBE Antonio responded, FaceTime me. 
In spite of G. Herbo frequent dealings with Antonio as set forth below when Special Agent Taylor Martin of the United States Secret Service interviewed G. Herbo on November 24th, 2018, G. Herbo falsely stated he never paid Antonio. Stood strong. That boy stood strong, man. You, one thing you can't say, the nigga might be kind of dumb. Like, shout out to Herb. I rock with Herb. That's my guy, but he kind of slow. I ain't gonna lie. For these moves... You was moving, you was moving walkie, bro. You was moving real walkie. But you stood strong, my nigga. You ain't no rat. I fuck with that. Or received anything of value from him. Now, this is the details for the Jamaican trip that everyone was referencing to. On June 8th, 2017, G Herbo sent Antonio DMs. Hit my line. Call me ASAP and send up an image of a six-bedroom villa in Jamaica. The same day, G Herbo phone had two contacts entered in 8253. June 12th through the 14th of 2017, G Herbo had following DMs with Antonio. G Herbo, quote unquote, I'm going to send you some bread. I need you to get this. Antonio, okay, where are you? G Herbo, I'm in Chicago now. I was telling you to hit me. I need that for Jamaica though. G Herbo, a fish shoot though, big bro. No bullshit. You could do that? Question mark. Antonio respond, yeah, when you going? G Herbo, July 7th through the 11th. True on, bro. Is you going to be able to do that or nah? Antonio responds, bro, what's up with all this DM sh? Hit my line. You need something done ASAP? Hit me, gang. Two exactly, bro. This nigga had to tell G Herbo, you're tweaking, my nigga. What's up with all this DM shit, bro? You need some ASAP? Hit my line. Why do you keep on doing this, bro? You get gonna get us fucked. Look. Bro, look, strong. Right. I'm I'm going. July 7th through the 11th. Where you on, bro? Is you going to be able to do it or not? Nah? Strong. Bro, what's up with all this DM sh Hit my phone. You need some ASAP. You need something done ASAP. Hit me, gang. Like, bro, why is you in this DM shit? July 7th through the 11th. True on, bro. Is you going to be able to do that or not? Nah? Antonio responds, bro, what's up with all this DM sh Hit my line. You need something done ASAP? Hit me, gang. Two weeks later, on June 26, 2017, G Herbo wrote Antonio and said, hey, Antonio, on veto, hit me today, bro. For real, you capping it off, big bro. I'm going to another country, bro. Not LA. This sh can't be last minute or fluky, bro. I'm finna be in Jamaica. I can't just book no hotel room if you tweak, bro. On veto, I sent you my money the first day, bro. Stop acting like I ain't supposed to be mad at your plan, and I'm not talking to you bro G damn that nigga tight like see you going off on a nigga like bro I ain't supposed to be mad like stop acting like I ain't supposed to be mad at you and I'm not talking to you bro like damn he trying to say it's violence nigga if we're not talking what we doing if we're not talking what we doing right I can't just book no hotel room if you tweak, bro. On veto, I sent you my money the first day, bro. Stop acting like I ain't supposed to be mad at your plan, and I'm not talking to you, bro. G Herbo go on to say, I'm leaving on the 7th. I need my sh book today, dude. Not tomorrow, not next week. None of that sh. Yo, this nigga Herb is a tweak, bro. Son, this nigga Herb is crazy. Do y'all hear this shit? Bro, I hope y'all still hear, my nigga. Yo, bro, I'm veto up with you time after time again. After you tweak with everybody else, but I still with you. So why is you tweaking, dude? I'm disappointed in you, big bro. Make me feel good, cause you tripping. Antonio. <laughs> Nigga told him, pause. Make me feel good. <laughs> cause you tripping. Pause, pause, pause. This nigga G Herbo think he the biggest boss that you've seen thus far. Responded, shut up and let me do it now, man. Had to wait a little days closer, bro. G Herbo responded, right, on veto. I know you official like a whistle. You just like not hitting them. Go on. This, now you want to, I, I know you official. Like, uh, look at this shit. This shit funny. This shit comedy. Look. Now, man. Look, the nigga said, shut up. Let me do it now, man. Had to wait a little days closer. Bro, the nigga like, yo, bro. Because the nigga G Herbo going off on a nigga. Nigga said, shut up. Shut the fuck up, nigga. You blowing my nigga. I'm trying to get it right, stupid. You keep hitting my line with this dumb shit. Giving these niggas more evidence to read out in court, stupid. Had to wait a little days closer, bro. She heard my responding. Right, on veto. I know you official like a whistle. You just like not hitting them. Going missing. Come on, bro. Reserve that crib and some whips for me, big bro. On veto. I'll pay you again. And I'm going to do the verse. Just lace me the whole little week on June 30th, 2000. Yo. This nigga heard, man, bro. Why you ain't just pay for that shit out of pocket, bro? This was tweaked. This was way crazy, bro. This was this is out of line, bro. 
Nigga said, reserve that big ass crib for me and some whips for me, big bro, on veto. I'll pay you again. And I'm going to do the verse. Just lace the motherfucker whole little week. Oh my God, this nigga crazy. 17, G Herbo responded, send me my crib. A day before the trip, July 6, 2017, G Herbo wrote Antonio, book my sh bro ASAP today, right now, or in the morning, first thing something, bro. On veto, I ain't calling you, blowing you up for my sh bro. GBE Antonio responded, wasn't it? I've been asleep. You tripping, gang. I got you today, homie. How am I tripping, bro? And I leave at 5 a.m. You can go to sleep again. Anything can happen, bro. Just book it for me when it get too late. Get them whips, too. While G Herbo was in Jamaica, the 9th through the 10th, Antonio wrote him, how's everything? You good out there? He responded, yeah, big bro. I'm trying to find my other phone. My sh tweaking. Are you going to put a card on file for me? Laugh out loud. Incidental. Antonio respond. What? Call me now. MBS, which is no bullshit. G Herbo responded, you ain't called me. You posted got me whips on deck, everything. I need you to call the front desk and email them a new car info, dude. They got my car on there still. They trying to charge me all kind of shit, gang. That Villa State was a little less than $15,000. And the FBI also quoted that G Herbo took the time to do a music video. The song is titled Man Now, released five years ago. Bruh, come on, man. They using everything. His every video, everything he did was they trying to say was fraudulent. With over 20 million views and counting. City of sorrow, man. Uh, oh, uh, I caught on to my environment. Had to, I had to grow. That video was shot where he was standing at, at the Hanover Grand Village. That $14,549 transaction was charged back one day after G Herbo had left on July 13th, 2017. FBI said one day after the nigga left it gets charged back. How convenient. After the Jamaican trip, G Herbo continued to have conversation with GBE Antonio, including asking him for goods and services in various locations. On July 19, 2017, G Herbo had DM Antonio. Dude, your ass to get me on the whip. Hell nah. I ain't giving you no more favors, dude. You owe me all the favors now. Between August 21st to August 22nd, 2017, G Herbo, using the phone editing 6240, had six contacts that was used between frauds on August 17th, 2017 and September 8th, 2017. On September 9th, 2017, G Herbo sent a DM to Antonio, I need a car, I'm in a rat. On October 4th, 2017, G Herbo sent a DM to Antonio, need a car in Miami, it's only for a date. Between October 6th, 2017 and December 22nd, 2017, G Herbo phone and Antonio phone had 812 text messages between the two. One, for example, hey, I'm in L.A., this Herb. The Dream Squad fraud started November 28th, 2017. Bro, this nigga G Herbo wasn't trying to use his own money for nothing at this point, bro. He said, I'm in Miami for a day, I need a whip. You couldn't use your own card, your own whatever to get a whip, bro. You just doing the most, bro. At this point, it's like, I guess this shit just all added up to this game. When G Herbo had DM Antonio, hey bro, give me a whip with the dude. I'm in Chicago. According to the records, an exotic rental and chauffeur company in Chicago called themselves Dream Squad LLC had gave G Herbo a rental on November 28, 2017. It was a Mercedes Benz S560. Just for a week for the amount of $4,410 and a mm. Cadillac. $4,010? Four thousand ten dollars for a thousand dollars a week. Antonio told G Herbo, if they ask you, my name is Darren. Darren from Epic Travel Agency. G Herbo responded, Damn, bro, we finna finesse all week. Don't trip, B. You finna stick with me. But this fine, bro. We finna finesse all week. Why you texting like that? This you though, right, dude? Finna come bring me the whip right now. You finna pay him? Antonio respond, Yeah. Tell him you gonna let the travel agency pay for it. I handled all the travel in Chicago. I got one of his cars now. G Herbo. All right, bet. Yeah. What you got though? I might wanna switch. Laugh out loud. I got it in Rody name, the S560. Rody was another co defendant, Joseph Williams, also known as Rody. G Herbo responded, You in the S? Just get me a name to put my in real quick then. Antonio responded, Don't forget, Darren is my name if he ate. G Herbo responded, I got you, bro. He good. Just answer when I call. During a later exchange, on November 28, 2017, Antonio and G Herbo agreed to meet in Chicago so G Herbo could pay Antonio money, which he left with his doorman. On December 2, 2017, the Dream Squad representative entered into a rental agreement for Mercedes-Benz S550 with the man who used the name Darren, the strong number 6735, which belonged to Antonio, and an email address globalmarketing at gmail.com. 
But these fools put the rental agreement under G Herbo artist booking for three weeks for four thousand a week on December second. Dumb as hell. Still connected G Herbo to it. Still connected G. Did all of this fraudulent. But still connected G Herbo to it. Not like the feds wasn't already on you and putting all this together anyway. But then you're going to go, bro, these niggas wanted to get caught, gang. They was just balling until they fall. 2017, G Herbo and Antonio said the following through text. G Herbo, nah, what's that? Where you at? On veto, bro. Why you playing with me? Extend the whip, bro. That came for no month. Why you be lying? Would I pay you some more bread? You already owe me. Get the whip. So why you ain't extended when I paid you the other money, bro? You know it don't be costing you to do this, dude. Antonio responded, dude, you good. I told you stop texting me about that car. I told you you good already, man. G Herbo responded on veto. All right, dude. He said it was only for a week, man. So you tell me. I don't like that last minute, bro. I'm up telling me some and didn't. Antonio responded, because I'm doing it the way I supposed to do it. Eventually, if I ain't do it that way, that's not the way is to do it, homie. You see, like he trying to tell you, bro, relax. Like he over here trying to make shit work the way he make it work. He the mastermind behind the shit, nigga. He know what he doing. G Herbo, nigga, you you was doing way too much, bro. Way too much, my nigga. I gotta I gotta get through this whole video because I wanna see how more slow you are. G Herbo responded, you right, boss, man. Three days later, on December 5th, 2017, G Herbo and Antonio would start texting again. Antonio stating, bro, he waxing us. This is too high. $8,200? Call me, bro. Her, you hear me? Call dude with the car. Tell him darn taking care of it right now. He already rushing. G Herbo, I just acted like I'm finna call. But time was running out, and GBE Antonio couldn't do it. He sent a screenshot of his account on the dark web. Telling G Herbo, look at my account. I can't get no moves or get a room or nothing. All the charges came back fraud, and they end up owing more than $34,000 to the car company. By this point, G Herbo wasn't caring, because on December 15th, the owner had wrote him in a DM. I need the car, bro. Your guy disputed all the charges. Your whole car rental. On December 31st, after hearing no response, the dude responded again, saying, Happy New Year's, and I'm taking action about the fraud. G Herbo did not respond, nor did he pay Dream Squad. Now, the last documented fraud. Yo, the nigga gave you a chance. The nigga DM'd you directly and said, Yo, my nigga, I know what's going on, gang. I need my bread. Give me all, give me my bread, my nigga, and I don't care about nothing else. But I need my bread. Nigga G Herbo wanna ignore the nigga. Okay. Was Wolf Wolf Puppies and Boutique in Michigan. He ended up getting two puppies and giving his then girlfriend and his baby mother Ari one, as you guys see above. On November 29th, 2017, just one day after the Dream Squad transaction, Antonio used the name Darren again for the amount of $10,485 as he purchased two dogs, as he claimed, for his client. The owner asked Antonio to take, to take a picture of his driver license with his picture of his face, but he refused, so the owner ended up contacting G Herbo personally. Antonio told him to respond, and he did so. After having the transactions reversed the next day, she went back and talked to G Herbo via Instagram, and this what they had to say to each other. Wolf Wolf Boutique owner said, we had two Yorkie puppies sent to Hubert Wright G Herbo. This past November 2017, we recently received a charge back to date stating that there was fraudulent transaction when this obviously wasn't. Please resolve this matter as soon as you can. Thanks, below are the pictures of Mr. Wright with the puppies. G Herbo didn't respond, so she wrote again on January 29th, 2018. Before I go to the police department, do you want to resolve this? We have you in the photo, wouldn't it? Bruh, why would you not just respond, bro? Like, think about this. Why would you not just respond, bro? This license plate, this is a felony before this goes any further. Did you want to respond? Question marks. G Herbo responded, don't you see the pictures on my page? Does that look like me in the pic? I never met you. The lady responded, you messaged me while I was on the phone with you from your official page. The phone call was recorded. Here's your message confirming you were getting two puppies and came direct. They sent the limousine to go pick up the puppies. That transaction ended up being fraudulent as well for a little under 800 bucks. Bruh. And those are the entirety of the evidence and the charges that G Herbo was connected to to have him pay a little under 140,000 in restitution. And because of that, G Herbo took a plea. His sentencing, incarceration within the guidelines was just three to five years, no less than 12 months, a fine within the guidelines, 36 months of supervised release, and also $200 in court costs. So now we know all this information, probably more reading I've done for one video. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, man. Shout out to the family. He really broke it down. 
Shout out to you, gang. You definitely broke it down for real. I ain't gonna lie. That's wild evidence against G Herbo. I ain't even gonna lie. We can't say nothing at this point. Uh, listen, I hope G Herbo stay stay strong, man. Get his uh label situation correct. Get everything right, cause he gonna need that bread while he's sitting up, man. Uh, I'm gone. I'm off this nasty, man. Do right. And if you ain't gonna do right, my nigga, don't leave an evidence trail like this, nigga. Jimmy Gang, I'm going. I'll see y'all in the next one. Make sure you subscribe. If you made it to this point in the video, you Jimmy Gang for life. I'm gone.